Grace at $1.70. How does he look, Alf, this favourite? Matt, all I can say is he's a magnificent looking animal. I didn't see him in the flesh, obviously, at uh, Caulfield when he won. I was in Adelaide at the time, but uh, it's wonderful to see a beautiful looking horse. Look, he is the late male. There's been good money uh, for him uh, on course. And look, it's pretty much square across. Ready to run. Group three event. Set to go. No sign of the red light. There it is now racing and on focus began quickly it's going out looking for the lead from great is great who's booting through now and Great is Great's going to hold on focus. They get across in front of Wardroom and Barabba Road. And dropping to last was Rinky Dink. 900 left to go. Great is Great leading by a neck on on focus. A length away in third place, Wardroom just over racing a little. On its outside, Barabba Road. And last of the five was Rinky Dink. Approaching the 700, Great is Great by a half length on on focus. A length and a half away third now, Barabba Road tracking the favoured pair. Around Wardroom and two last of all coming around the turn at the 500 in the Jans was Rinky Dink. It's great as great a neck in front of On Focus. In third place Barabba Road poised to pounce on these leaders. Followed by Wardroom and Rinky Dink is hard ridden. Coming around the turn at the 300 the leader great is great. On Focus the jockey's gone for the whip. Here's Barabba Road letting down with a big finish. The great is great responds at the 200. He's still a length in front. On the outside Barabba Road's chasing gamely. Great is great the leader from Barabba Road and Rinky Dink runs on late. Great is great Great in front at the moment of Barabba Road and Rinky Dink. Great is great hanging on. Rinky Dink dive late. Maybe on the inside. Great is great. Maybe great is great. A short half head to Rinky Dink. He's defied the pattern of racing if he is the winner. In third position, Barabba Road from On Focus and Wardroom came in along last. Looks like great is great. will hold on. Very green, of course, still. Only his second race start. He had nothing to go with him from the home corner to the 75. King has put the whip on him. I think he'd had enough on the line. Rinky Dink has been the big run. She's come late. Very late. One is first. One, five, two is on the frame. One, five and two. Great is great. Will win by maybe a short head, half head at the least. So I don't think he was really suited by that race there in terms of the way it was run because He's a sitting shot. We saw him at Caulfield at his first start, claim the leaders on the corner and race away. And when I said it hasn't, he has gone against the pattern of racing today, and indeed Saturday, not many leaders led all of the way, especially in sprint races. I know it was a small field here, but he's done a big job, this bloke. That wins a lot better than it looks, even though it's only a margin that is narrow. Great is great by Desert Sun from Predictions Raced by H. Long, Greg Urell at Cranbourne, is the winning trainer. The Jans taken by Great is Great from Rinky Dink, which was under the whip before the turn. John Didham, Rick Hall Lacey and Barabba Road. He travelled beautifully. Blinkers first time, back in journey. He looked as though he was going to go to Great is Great, but he couldn't catch him. And he'll run third. On focus, she'll go for a spell now. She's won four races, all at black type level. And like a lot of the opponents today, a lot to look forward to in the spring. And uh, he's going to make a nice three-year-old. There'll be something for him in the spring. Uh, Morfittville is next, the Centauria Stakes, over 2,005 metres. It's a listed race worth $50,000 in prize money. And the favourite's class eulogy. We heard from Karen McAvoy. We're now going to hear from Cliff Brown. He's the trainer of number nine, Galadriel. Cliff, what do you think of the chances of Galadriel? Bears over 2,005 with the rail out a metre. They're all in. Set to go. And they're racing. Beginning well from the inside. Terranora out fast in Costa Reno. Classic Patches is being ridden hard to go and find the lead. And it's going to lead early. From Silk Vale away well and Lilo Lil working over. Deeper still good thing getting around Shanghai Moon. Now Terranora gets back. Class Eulogy fourth last from Galadriel, followed by Twilight Rose. At a length and a half away last of all is Dance of Dreams. Into the back straight they head now, and they approach the 1,500 metres, and the pilot now, good thing, took over the running by three quarters of a length and doesn't cross down to the rails presently. From in second place, Silk Vale and one and a half, Lilo Lil. A half away, Classic Patches on the inside. Then a length and a half, Shanghai Moon, who's racing around in Costa Reno. Three quarters to Class Eulogy, covering Terranor 
Aurora, then two lengths away, Galadriel inside of Twilight Rose, and last is Dance of Dreams. At the 1100, the leader, Good Thing, by one and a half. In second place, Silk Vale. A half away, Lilo Lil, and fourth on the inside was Classic Patches, then a length to Shanghai Moon. There's no moves. In Costa Reno to the inner of Class Eulogy, and Terranor has come away from the fence. It's following Class Eulogy now. Further back came Twilight Rose, followed by Galadriel and Dance of Dreams. 800 metres before them, Good Thing leads by three quarters to Silk Vale, which looks to have the inside running. Then a length away came Lilo Lil, followed by Classic Patches. Then Shanghai Moon, followed by Galadriel sneaking home on the fence. Class Eulogy taking off from in Costa Reno, Terra Nora. And last is Dance of Dreams. Coming around the turn at the 500 in the Schweppes, the leader, Good Thing, away from the inside, about a half length in front of Lilo Lil coming through. Here come the back markers now. Quickly out wide, Class Eulogy's moved up. So too through out wider on the course now, Twilight Rose. He let Class Eulogy go at the 300. She raced to the lead. Galadriel coming home on the rails. And wider out, Twilight Rose. Terra Nora not in the race. It's Class Eulogy at the 100. Well clear. She's got them beaten in the Schweppes. Class Eulogy. Twilight Rose is trying hard. Class eulogy though, unlucky last start and got the money. Three quarters of a length on the line, maybe a length. Second, Twilight Rose. Third, maybe Lilo Lil just over Classic Patches. Then Galadriel close up behind those. Came Good Thing, which finished wider out than Shanghai Moon. In Costa Reno, Terra Nora didn't come into it. It was on the back of the winner around the turn, so no excuse from Dance of Dreams and last over the line or pulling up behind the others. Silk Vale in 206.72. Class eulogy number four. 490 and 210 has blitzed them in the Schweppes. Kieran McAvoy for Michael Moroney. As I showed you on the replay this morning on inside running, this horse should have finished a hell of a lot closer last start in the marsh. I thought she should have run a clear second. Instead, she ran seventh. It may have turned some away, but if you have a good look at the tape, she had no luck. And she's had... Well, she didn't have any good luck today. She just made her own luck. She stayed out of trouble and clear running. First option at the leaders on the corner and she raced away. Four class eulogy first, her fifth win, and she's beaten Twilight Rose number three, which come, came out of the Witten Stakes, won by Exalted Lad. Luke Curry for David Hall. Luke, a late arrival here today due to some playing difficulties. One Lilo Lil, that's been her best run for a little while. And seven's run fourth. 4317, 206.72, the time for the Schwepp Stakes race five, which paves the way for uh, one of our feature sprint races, the Pope packaging. No, it's a mile. In fact, the uh, the open handicap, 1,600 are listed. Due to go at 2.30. Big field here in race number six over one mile. It's a first four race on Unitab. Righto, Hilt, good tip too on the, uh, the form program this morning. Class eulogy was one that uh, Hilton was very keen on. Yes, 17 runners in that next event. Now, the extra double at Morfittville, Unitab, one and four, $13.30. That's Naden into class eulogy. I've had a chat with Wayne Kerford, the rider of number 11, Winning Spirit. Well, Wayne, you rode Winning Spirit last week. What did you think of its performance? Oh, it, was a, it was a super effort, Alf. Um, I actually thought I'd won the race. Another start, and, and I certainly do. Um, it's funny, once he got back, there was good speed in the race. I probably just was looking for something to cart him into the race um, for a bit longer than I had to and probably had to make a little bit longer run than I wanted to on him. Um, Does yeah. this race today suit? I think it suits, suits today. If, if there's any sort of speed in the race and it's run genuine, he's going to be the one finishing home over the top of him. And also, race eight, you ride a horse called Favour. Had a few problems in the gates, but uh, a nice ride for you. He's a nice ride, Alf. Down in weight, um, probably his biggest test. It's in this sort of company today, but look, the horse is going really well. Hasn't had a lot of luck its last couple. Um, the horse is, is like I say, he's, he's racing super. If he was ever going to sort of try and step up into the, to the next level, today's probably the right day for it. OK, good luck and ride well. You've got two nice chances. Thanks, self. Alf Matthews and Wayne Kerford talking about the uh, hopes of winning spirit. Number 11 in the next. Runners are behind the gates and they'll be moving up shortly. We're just standing by for correct weight and the first four to come through from Flemming. Clark of the course assisted. Racing now, they're off in the Pope packaging. Slow to begin, Master Gel and Latte and first away circumnavigating from the inside with Senesi. Showing good speed also was Fireball. Go the Naki was up there and just ahead of it, Catavia. 
Now from out wide starting to work over was Exalted Lad. It's going up towards the lead as well. And Marin Cheval pressed on. Sorting them out soon as he led Marin Cheval. Fireball circumnavigating and Exalted Lad. Then Serene back on the inside of Go the Naki. Then came Katavia and right around the outside Lady Knockouts pressing on in the early stages followed by Silvana Latte. Now Latte was back about fourth last with Argenio by the 900 metres then real time none for the road. Winning Spirit copped a check off heels there. It's third last. Master Jill is back with it as they come towards the 800 metre mark and there's one other obscured in the centre at the moment and that is Sun Tuazi. 700 metres to go. The leader seen as he from Exalted Lad Lady Knockout then Fireball circumnavigating on the rails from Marin Cheval. Silvana none for the road taking off. Go the Naki in the centre needing it out. Argenio taken to the outside. Catavia behind a wall of horses from Serene. Then came Latte followed by Sun Tuazi. Well back to real time. Winning Spirit second last as they come around the corner at the 350 and Silvana strode to the lead from none for the road. Go the Naki got out it runs on and then came Lady Knockout at Argenio down the outside. Silvana still the leader from none for the road. Go the Naki back to the inner. Silvana from none for the road. Go the Naki and then circumnavigating coming through late. She's going to do it again this mare. She loves Morfordville. Silvana scored by two. Second none for the road. Third and unlucky circumnavigating from Go the Naki and Argenio just behind them, Mustard Gel, followed by Sun Tuazi, winning Spirit Catavia, further back to Latte, and then came Serene, real time, Marin Cheval, Lady Knockout, Senesi was next in, a gap exalted lad and fireball last. Unbelievable, this mare. Six starts at Morfordville for five wins. And she is unbeaten over a mile at Morfordville in five of, of those six runs. This is astonishing. Absolutely amazing how a horse can just go to a place and and run so well each time. She had 58 kilos today. She drew barrier 15. So you'd think, well, they can beat her today. She was double figure dividends on course. And she's paid 9.30 and 3.30 on the TAB. None for the road was a big run. Number 10, 12, 20 for a place. His form's been very good indeed. He drew 17 in the race. Again, Jay Potter putting himself into the fray. So one beats 10. Seven circumnavigating. Looked unlucky in third place. Got buried back on the inside. The gate of no advantage to it whatsoever. But there were very few excuses outside of that, Matt. OK, Hilton, thank you. And uh, you can warm up now for the big one, the Adelaide Cup, which is next there at uh, Morfittville, race seven in about uh, 37 minutes, the big two-miler. The uh, Unitab first four on that race at Morfittville, one ten seven six thirteen thousand and eight dollars and sixty cents. It was also a New South Wales first four uh, race, but uh, the uh, New South Wales dividend, first four dividends usually take... Uh, a little while to uh, to come through, so we'll keep an eye out for it. Race six at Canterbury, they're heading to the start. Ratings, here's the market now. One of those uh, top four ratings has come up $44, Odysseus. La Destina racing very well is $9. Nautilism at $6.80 for the Freedmans. Goes well on the flat as well as over the fences. And Pillage and Plunder at $6.10. He's the cup favourite at $6.10. Down to uh, Corporate Queen, number 14. Chris Munts has gone across to, uh, to Ryder. $8.70 for Gay Waterhouse. And of the rest, there's Firetain's a chance at uh, $12 for the smoke-free Adelaide Cup in 14 minutes. Ips Ipswich, race six in the jungle, beat Elaborate and Russian Knight, 461. You've got the visitor's gate on Spillway. Yeah, I don't think he's too disadvantaged out there being the two mile. Um, he's going to roll forward. He's probably even lead, I think, Alfie. And uh, I think he ran a terrific race. I thought his run the other day was good. I thought he probably should have pressed on a little bit more than taking a sit on him. So I'll be rolling forward on him today. Good luck. Thanks, mate. That's Jimmy's comments there on uh, his mount. Spillway, number 12 for Gay Waterhouse. Gay has got two runners in the race. She'll also be sending around the more fancied runner, Corporate Queen, number 14. Corporate Queen will be ridden by Chris Munts. Do conditions suit for Corporate Queen? Yeah, I think they will, Alf. I mean, um, she won on a heavy track the other day at Randwick, so I was actually hoping for probably a little bit more rain today, but I'm sure she'll run well. Be forward, back. Yeah, I don't think she'll be far away, especially from a good barrier. I mean, she was forced probably back a little bit further than she should have been the other day because of the wide barrier. But, um, you know, hopefully today she can be in the first probably six or so and 
be hard to beat from there. Good luck. Thanks, mate. Ta. OK, Chrissy Muntz, the rider of Corporate Queen in the Adelaide Cup. Now at uh, Flemington, runners are getting set for race six. There was uh, also a race meeting at Edenhope in Victoria this afternoon. Just letting you know the last couple of races were abandoned due to uh, the smoke-free Adelaide Cup of 3,200 metres. Uh, jockeys are uh, mounting up. The rider of Leicester Thunderwing, Darren Gauchy, about to come over and jump on board. Let's uh, take you to Alf. Alf, what do you like in the big two-miler? Well, this is a very, very tough race, Matt, and uh, a very open one indeed. Look, I'm going to stick with uh, my special this morning, Pillage and Plunder, number six. I like the horse. He's one of very few runners that, in fact, drops in weight in a race like this. He carried 56 the other day, drops to 53 and a half. Sure, I accept the fact that he hasn't drawn perfectly, but nevertheless, I think he'll be able to overcome it. And let's face it, he still gets a fair run to be able to obtain a posse back in the field somewhere. I like the look of him. He did work extremely well during the week. Thursday morning, he galloped sensationally. So I'm happy to have him on top. Also, number 17, Firetain. Look, it's going to get the perfect run from the perfect barrier here. Race as well this time of the year. And I think Stewie Webb's done a fantastic job with this horse. Been very, very solid on course. Number 17, Firetain, has not moved an inch. Either way, represents a bit of value on the tote. Number two, Lurdestein. Well, what can you say about it? It just keeps on winning. Three on the trot. The dead track, probably a little bit of a bonus. Drawn in the middle of the field. It's going to get a respectable sort of run in transit. Reese McLeod knows it very well. And even though people said he dropped his whip over the concluding stages um, in the uh, Carlton draft, uh, I don't believe it made any difference. It was still strong on the line. I don't think he would have extracted any more out of it. The horse has been trained to the minute, in my opinion, by Robert Smurden. And I'm also going to include, well, the jumper. Number three, Nautilism. Again, he's been fairly solid on course, uh, uh, you know, just under the double figure quote. So I think he's got a genuine chance too. You know he can run the trip without any trouble, given the fact he's a grand national winner. And apart from that, look, there's an array of chances. A very, very open race. You know, Corporate Queen, Spillway, they've all had reasonable support on course. Spillway probably to a lesser degree as opposed to uh, Corporate Queen. Even the A-Train, it's been fairly solid too. So I can't put them all in. Big Pat, it's another one that's been extremely solid. Hasn't moved either way. Represents a bit of value, but can't put them all in, Matt. Six ahead of 17, two and three for the big one of the day, the Adelaide Cup. Group one worth $400,000 in uh, prize money. Not too many group ones left in this uh, racing season. About uh, four or five left in Brisbane and this one in uh, Adelaide, of course. Ipswich, Waiters Right, race six. Four in the jungle beat Elaborate and Russian Knight. Four, six and one with the numbers. Now let's look ahead to the next race at Canterbury. Seven Morfittville is the Adelaide Cup. Let's hear from Dwayne Dunn. He's riding Terminus Prince, number nine. Dwayne, good to see you back in Adelaide. Is it nice to be home? Oh, it's great to be home. It's been a real rush trip. I got off the plane at 11 o'clock and, uh, yeah, it's been a little bit of a struggle to get here. Well, you obviously won't leave your form back there. You rode a couple of winners in Hong Kong yesterday. Yeah, I had that double yesterday in a second, so uh, the form's good and uh, hopefully I can bring it to Adelaide. Now, you're riding your father's horse, Terminus Prince, in the Adelaide Cup. You would have had a good talk to him about it. What do you think of its chances? Well, he's a very good run in the Warnable Cup. I know he got sort of dictated to by the speed and got left alone a bit, but I thought he boxed on quite nicely in that race. Um, a big question mark whether they run two mile. I don't think we see enough two mile races in Australia to really season them to get the trip. So it'll be a question mark at the 800 metre. I'll either have petrol left in the tank or I'll be flat out. And I think if I have got something left in reserve, I think he'll kick and, and really be a dow stay and be hard to hold. Well, that's good. Noble win. Interesting ride for you in race eight. Yeah, a long time since I've ridden this horse. I won a maiden on it uh, back at Victoria Park some time ago before I went to Hong Kong. So you're talking two, three years ago now. Um, the horse has improved out of sight. He will get a long way back. He has drawn wide. Um, whether this track today really allows for run-ons, I'm a little bit question. A few questions whether it will be able to give me a chance to get over the top of him. 
and Sadler's Law, it's first up in the last. Do you know much about it? I actually ride for this owner in Hong Kong and um, this horse actually won a 2,000 metre race in England and it led all the way in just a sort of a dow staying type. So maybe the mile first up, I don't think it should be too much of a trouble for it to run it out and uh, hopefully if it can produce some form and acclimatise to Australia, it might be a chance. Well, it's lovely to see you back in Adelaide. We wish you well. Be nice to win an Adelaide Cup. Oh, it would be lovely, and especially for Dad. And uh, that's my main reason I come back. It's Dad's first Group One runner, and uh, I just come back and see the family because we've been away with the SARS virus, so the family's been here. So it'd be good to see everyone and get back. And it's always especially good to see you, Al. <laughs> good luck, good all right, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Wouldn't that just be the story of the carnival if Dwayne done this flying visit back to Adelaide to ride his dad's horse in the Adelaide Cup, if it happened to uh, to get up and win? Terminus Prince is his uh, father's horse, number nine. A couple of uh, past winners are uh, lining up again this year. The A-Train won it last year and Apache King won it in 2001, written by Peter Mertens. And this was the launching pad for a Melbourne Cup winner about ten years ago, a bit more than ten years ago. Sub-Zero won the Cup in 92 in Adelaide before going on to win the uh, the big one at Flemington about six months later. They're moving in with his call of the Adelaide Cup, his Hilton. Now Exalted Bow comes forward. Exalted Bow goes in. Getting order on track. 14-17 equal favourites. Over 6, over 2 and 16, over 3, 11 and 13 equal. There's eight horses within a, a few points of each other. Terminus Prince goes in, Corporate Queen right. That order again, 14, 17 equal from six, from two and 16 equal, from three, 11, 13 equal. That's the order on course. Now Oxford Dollar joins them. Last year's winner, the A train comes forward. Again, Stephen Baster, the rider. He carried 50 and a half kilos last year. Here's Nautilism, who last year around this time Won the Von Deuces steeplechase at Oakbank. Still on the move though. Tarouge coming forward now. Andrew Findlay riding a half over. Now next along is Nautilism. Nautilism goes in. Belton comes up. Very windy day here in Adelaide for the Adelaide Cup. They're just about set. The last couple move in. Lidestina. Goes forward Apache King in a pink cap to distinguish from the stable mate. There'll be a big roar from the crowd. They're all in. 3,200 metres. Don't think it'll rain for the cup. Got our fair share though. Red light on. They're off now. Racing in the Adelaide Cup of 2003. And as expected, Terminus Prince was out fast and going out looking for the lead. Nautilism's got good speed, so too Firetain. The A-Train was up there and Taruja is showing speed. And now Lester Thunderwing let go with a move through the centre. Is going to take up the running. Trapped out very wide spillway and I'm Notty around the first corner. Getting back behind those now was Karazi and then further back about 10th in the early stages, Corporate Queen inside of Odysseus, followed by Exalted Bow, Pillage and Plunder, Big Pat from Oxford, Dollar Belton, Lidestina back running fourth last and then came Caradan inside of our guided missile and Apache King who won it two years ago as last, Terminus Prince and crossed and led for Dwayne Dunn up on the outside, Spillways moved up to apply some pressure and go and sit outside the leader now. Third is Karazi, a length away on the inside Lester Thunderwing of Nautilism and I'm Notty racing three wide and in seventh or sixth position out of the straight. Tarouge on its inner. The A-Train last year's winner on the rails and then Corporate Queen which has got Odysseus three wide. Firetain from Barrier One got a fair way back midfield on the rails. A length away Exalted Bow from Big Pat being followed by Pillage and Plunder. Belton, Oxford Dollar then came Caradan, followed by Le Destina then Our Guided Missile and last of all on the inside is Apache King heading towards the 18 1,500 metre crossing and the pilot is Terminus Prince. He's got the ears pricked, a length and a half spillway. One and a half away, third Karazi. Then a half length up on the outside was uh, I'm Notty and then one and a half to Nautilism, followed by Lester Thunderwing on the inside. They're evenly spaced these, the speed fairly genuine. Then came Odysseus three wide around Tarouge, a length and a half the A-train, being followed by Corporate Queen Firetain. Our guided missile starts a move from back in the field, followed by Exalted Bow, Big Pat, then Pillage and Plunder. Three away Oxford Dollar around Belton, two and a half to Caradan on the inside of the Nick Moratus pair near the tail of the field, Lidestina, and last of all three away is Apache King. 
off the back. 1,300 metres to go and the leader is Terminus Prince by a length on Spillway. A length and a half away, third Karazi being followed in close attendance by I'm Notty. Our guided missiles try to get around the field has made it to about fifth and three off the lead. From Nautilism, perfectly ridden one off around Leicester Thunderwing. Then Odysseus on the outside of Taruge being followed by the A train. Further back came Corporate Queen. Firetain needing a lot of luck from there as is Big Pat. They're being hemmed in by Exalted Bow. Pillage and Plunder has clear running about to come to the outside as they approach the 800 metre mark. Then came Belton, followed by Oxford Dollar. Further back to Caradan. Ledestina still second last and Apache King at the rear. 650 metres to go. Terminus Prince leads by a half to Spillway. Our guided missile. Nautilism's there at the right time and Corporate Queen's taking off now. Here she comes with her move and Pillage and Plunder is following her home. Being followed by Exalted Bow. The rest headed up by Big Pat trying to work one off through the field and Firetain's been held up for a run. Gets one off now in the straight in the Adelaide Cup at the 300 and Terminus Prince has been grabbed wide out by Corporate Queen and Pillage and Plunder let go. The Kiwi shot to the lead in the Adelaide Cup of 2003 from Corporate Queen Nautilism. Odysseus running a mighty race. Ludestina from the tail of the field's a place chance but it's all Pillage and Plunder. Pillage and Plunder is coming away over the final stages and Pillage and Plunder won the Adelaide Cup by three lengths Nautilism. A neck away hey, third forget. Odysseus. An, an enormous run. Was three wide the entire journey. Then Corporate Queen from Ledestina. Big Pat followed in by Karazi. Terminus Prince outguided missile a nice run. Firetain may have had excuses followed by Taruj. Then Exalted Bow further back to Oxford Dollar followed in by Spillway. Then Apache King a big gap belt on Leicester Thunderwing followed home by I'm Notty. The A train and Caradan last in 3.28.43. Cakewalk from Amer who is a sister to Viander Cross. A mare called Rue, who is a sister to Viander Cross. So you knew that the journey wouldn't be a problem. And indeed, any given the ground. 6, 3, 1, and 14. This gelding's by Victory Dance. This horse won the Hawks Bay Cup two starts ago at Hastings. It's long been an initiative of TRSA and the SAJC to get as many Kiwis as we can to Adelaide. And one race that they have made exempt from ballot in this particular race, or for this particular race, is the Hawks Bay Cup. And have a, go a look at how good that form is. This horse has won the Adelaide Cup, charging away from them easily. Stephen King replacing Nashua Willa. All right, thank you, Hilton. Good, strong win. He's run the two miles out easily. Let's go straight to Alf. He's got the connections. Yes, I, I certainly have, <laughs> Matt. John, congratulations. That was an outstanding performance. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Alfie. Uh, he's got, um, you know, he's got plenty of what you need. Balls and character, you know. <laughs> um, oh, I'm so proud of him, mate. I bred this horse. I'm just so proud of him, you know. Well, you've obviously got to be very, very happy. They tell me he works sensationally during the week. Yeah, well, uh, I didn't think he'd go that fast, but there you go. <laughs> well, they might have quick clocks over here. <laughs> hey, um, OK, now you've won a Group 1 Adelaide Cup. What's along the track? Um, well, the way he did it, he'll go home, you know, we might put him aside and go to Melbourne. A couple of them have won in Melbourne before, haven't they? Indeed they have. If he'd have got beaten, he'd have gone to the Wellington Cup, but we might uh, get him ready for Melbourne. John, congratulations. Thank you, mate. There he is, John Kiernan, and, uh, well, he's provided pillage and plunder. We made it a special, and it didn't let us down. It absolutely blitzed him, Matt. Your best bet of the day getting up there at Morfittville. I think he started favourite at that price. It was that open, the Adelaide Cup this year. Uh, six dollars thirty six ten New South Wales and six thirty Super Tab. But uh, the Kiwis are having a very good trot during the winter or the late autumn. Uh, at Durban on Saturday, they won a couple of feature races there with that very smart filly that they've got named the Jewel. Bob's boy won a good race. He won the uh, the good three year old race and is on his way to the Derby. The Kiwis.